Hey folks, my name is Dave. This is Honcho, or 1978 Jeep J10 Desert Race Truck. I'm working on that truck over there, which I'm not sure if it's in the frame, but it's called Lefty. It's our new budget trophy truck, and we're gonna be trying to get that thing ready. So we're gonna take both of these trucks to the Baja 1000 this year. And uh, last year at the Baja 1000, we ran into some recovery issues where we we're trying to get Honcho out from deep into the desert. And there's a great story about that. I'm gonna tell you at the end of this video if you wanna stick around for that, I won't. It takes a couple of minutes, so I'll, I'll tell that story at the uh, the very end. But this video today is all about my buddy Bear. He is our guy who works on all of our recovery efforts, which I wish we didn't have to do, but Baja is what it is, and sometimes you have to recover a truck. And today he's gonna show you how he makes soft shackles. This is an amazing video, and it's one of our videos that's gonna go into our playlist called One Stop Shopping. It's gonna have everything you need on how to make it, where to get all the parts, everything you need to know is on this video or in the description below, and I hope you'll check those things out. And let's go ahead and get to it. Bear will show us how to make some soft shackles. Hi, my name's Paul, or Bear with NTD Racing. Today we're gonna to talk about soft shackles. I'm gonna show you how what you need to tie your own, how to tie the button knot, how to make the loop right, how to adjust the knot, and then how to tighten it once it's made. Let's get to it. Here's what you're gonna to need to tie a soft shackle out of high molecular weight polyethylene, also known as Dyneema or any other uh, brand name. You'll need a tape measure, a fid is what this is for, I'm gonna use it as a marlin spike for tightening because this is solid aluminum, not sharp, nice round edge. Um, a fid also that will take the 3 8 inch material in the end and help you splice. A magic marker, some high quality Kevlar or um, shears that are designed to cut this stuff. These I got for about $27 on Amazon. If you don't want to invest in these, then you need a cutting board and a sharp knife with a fresh razor. Some 550 cord or some other kind of cord that's kind of rough that you can tie a cinch knot with. And then you need the material, approximately six and a half to seven feet of 3 8 inch 12 strand Dyneema or uh, something equivalent that has about a 19,000 pound braking strength. There are variations in different brands, but as long as it has about a 19,000 pound braking strength for 3 8 inch, it's the same stuff. When you cut it, it doesn't melt very well or anything, so some black electrical tape, put it on there and then cut it at an angle, about 45 degrees to help it fit into your fid which this is really just a knitting needle that I bought at Michael's, cut on an angle, then deburred. Make sure the tip is smooth. And with that, we'll get started. Okay, now that you've got your approximately six and a half to seven foot long piece of Dyneema cut, you wanna match up the ends and then find the middle Helpful to put a mark there in case you have to redo this loop just so you can go, know where to go. But right now, we're making the sliding loop that will cinch down around the button knot. So the size that you want this loop to be is about, it'll go around four strands, but if you make it big enough for about three thicknesses of the Dyneema or the material you're using, that will work. So I'm gonna put this one of the, this piece through that piece at about right where my thumb is. So I'll do another mark here. You don't really have to do that mark, just to make it easy in case I have to redo it. So the important thing here is to make sure that you put this piece through that piece right through the middle. This is 12 strand Dyneema. So when you just push it together, you can see how it really opens up the more coating or um, coloring they put on it, the harder it will be. You can see the shine of this Harbor Freight Badland. Um, I think $37 soft shackle that I got. It's got a really thick coating that they put on, apparently maybe after they tied it, to help with abrasion and just keep everything nice and neat. You don't need it. It'll uh, plenty strong, 
but the more you work, work this, it'll soften up and become more like what I, I'm using. So there's my point that I want to, there's the middle point and there's the point where I'm gonna put the other piece through. So with my fid, I'm just gonna try to get between all 12 with six on one side and six on the other without splitting any of the strands like I'm about to do there, just slide it over. Now that I got my fid through, I'm gonna open it up and just count the number of strands to make sure I'm right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. So I need to put one more on this side. So I have six and six. Let's see which one seems to wanna to come over. Bring this one. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Put the taped end through so that hard and just put it all the way through like that. Match up your ends. So the ends are matched, slide it through, and that hole is a good size. If you have another one, you can kind of see how it's gonna be once it's on there all together. That's perfect, okay? So now it's time to tie the knot. The better you get at tying this knot, the least material you will need to do the tying. For this purpose, I'm gonna use a little bit more. I think I normally use about 17 or 18 inches of material. So right about here, roughly. But to make it easier to show you, I'm gonna use a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down, really I don't really care because I'm gonna show you another trick at the end once this knot's tied, if that's too small of a loop, when you're tightening the button knot with your fid, if you go clockwise, you're gonna be moving the slack into the tag ends and the knot is gonna stay right where it is. If you move the slack material counterclockwise, you're gonna be moving it into the standing ends and you're gonna push the knot this way and open up the loop. So that's one way to adjust the size of this soft shackle opening once you've tied the button knot. Okay, so I'm gonna go right about here. Now to hold these two pieces together, I'm gonna to use the constrictor knot. Okay, over, bring that same piece underneath. If you know knots for your Eagle Scout, that is a clove hitch. And then that piece I was working, just tie a overhand knot on that original piece that goes over. So you have an overhand knot with a cover that will hold when you pull it as tight as you want. So that dynamo will push back, okay? So now I got my two working ends that I'm gonna use to tie the button, okay? So to start, right about where the cinch knot is, with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to hold it, so I'm use these with my thumb and index finger, so these fingers can be used to help control the loops and openings that I'll need. So I'll do everything kind of in a right to left, um, first and second. So with the right side, bring it down and in front and across. Make this loop about that big. The left side's gonna go in front of to capture that. Try to make it nice and symmetrical, hold it with the uh, index finger, and then up through the back of that first loop you made. This is a wall knot that the electricians use for uh, putting cords into plugs, okay? Then put these two pieces up on top. Take the left side and on top of the right. Let that down for a minute. And then the right just tuck under like a basic overhand knot. Pull that down on top not too tight because you still want to be able to use all these openings. Go back to holding the knot with your non-dominant hand. Now I'm actually pinching these two pieces together. With my middle finger, I'm sticking it through with two pieces up here and this initial loop there. I want to maintain that loop for what comes next. Okay. Again, starting right to left, the right side is gonna come down on this side of my middle finger. So I have these two pieces up here and then two down here. And it's gonna go through 
the left side loop and pull it down enough that there's enough working end out here to be able to do what's next, okay? So I've maintained this opening, which is important. The piece I haven't used yet, the original left side, is gonna go over to capture that piece and then up through this opening that I've maintained with my middle finger, right up through there. Now, to keep enough tag ends, I can work some of it around. Okay. So now it looks like that kind of symmetrical. Now the most important thing is I'm gonna go back with my non-dominant hand and grab the original standing end up against the cinch knot with my thumb and my forefinger up against the cinch knot and the rest of my hand just kind of holding everything to keep it from all coming apart. Now, starting with what is the right side, we're gonna open up this simple overhand knot on the top, starting with this piece, which was the last piece we put in from the left, now it's the right piece, up and through this overhand knot down to where my index finger is, right up against the standing end where it has a cinch knot on it, okay? Hold that with my index finger of my left hand. Take the left side or the right piece, staying with this kind of clockwise orientation. That's gonna come up and go through that same overhand knot next to what we just did. It's gonna go down the same place where my thumb is, right there. So now, underneath, you have that piece we just did up against the standing end, the piece we did initially that went left to right against the back end. Okay, now holding all those, we can pull the st original standing end tight initially, and you can see how we're, there's our cinch knot. We've just, by doing that, we've gained back about two inches of the size of our soft shackle. Now, normally, if I was up against the cinch knot, I would tighten this, like all these loose pieces, clockwise, that would move this slack around the knot towards the tag ends and pull those. I want these tag ends to be about four to five inches long. But uh, right now, what I'm focusing on is the size of my soft shackle. So clockwise tightening brings the slack to the tag ends, working ends, Counterclockwise tightening will bring the slack to the standing ends, okay? And to follow the rope, you can see how we got these two pieces together. There's kind of everything's in twos. So this slack to find out where it goes in to where it comes out. See, it's pretty obvious now. You can see how this piece is that piece. So whenever you see a piece of slack, again, this is gonna go clockwise. Where it goes in, it'll go under two, and it'll be this end over here. It's pretty obvious since the knot is fairly open, but as you get tighter, you can lose track of what, where the piece comes in or out. So right now I'm gonna do some counterclockwise tightening to try to make the uh, standing in a little bit longer. So pull it this way. It's gonna go under two to this. And that's gonna go, which is, makes this a little bit harder because these are tied together, but that's all right. So. Clockwise, so counterclockwise, take this piece to here, goes under these two to here, and it goes down to the original piece. So I'm holding these to keep them even, so as I tighten it, it stays even, pulling these. So that, now, I actually like that length, that size of my soft shackle. It's about the same as what I've been doing. So now that I've gotten some, on that standing end, I'm gonna start going clockwise with the slack. So this piece is pretty slack, under two, so it becomes this piece. Uh, and then I think it goes down into right there. You wanna to try to keep these even, that'll help you keep the knot symmetrical as you go.
hit it as tight as you can with your hands and your marlin spike. You go out, you will bury these ends, and then we'll go out and actually use it um, in a controlled environment to help tighten that knot. Okay, now that I'm done tightening this, the uh, you can see it's still got a little bit of looseness, but it's nice and symmetrical. And my two tag ends are, uh, are fairly close to being the same. I might be able to get a little bit more slack out of that one. But now I can remove this cinch knot, depending on how tight you did it, or maybe if you tighten your knot down right on top of it, you can cut it. I hate cutting 550 cord, because you never know. Can't ever uncut it. So you can untie that. Give it a uh, how to use it. Cinch that down, and that'll work. That'll hold approximately 30, 35,000 pound breaking strength, according to How Not to Slack Line website, YouTube, that uh, has a sled to test those things. You kind of start with, you know, maybe a couple inch, half inch from the bottom. You can lay out your Dyneema so you can see all the 12 strand. Mark two pieces that are touching together, like this, that piece and that piece. Skip two, mark the next two, you can see there. Skip two, mark the next two, okay? And that'll taper down. Now I wanna do the other one about the same. So move it up from the end. Mark two, skip two, mark two, Skip two, mark two. Okay. Then with your shears or your razor blade knife, you can open this up, take those pieces out one at a time that you've marked. So even with these shears, it's kind of hard to cut. to the next two. You can pull them out now or pull them out all at once. It goes to the tape, so that's a little bit difficult. And you see, depending on where you cut it, whether or not these pieces stick out a lot and fray or not. Not quite to where it turns white. Cut the pieces that you've marked. Pull them out. So we're cutting half of them, so there's six pieces out of a 12-strand Dyneema. And then once you're done taking the pieces out, can get those back in. You want this cut kind of on an angle. You can just take the tape off. I kind of like to cut it out. That's why I left a little bit there. Put that at an angle too, just to help with the taper. Okay, so now we've got a nice taper, which is important to do. Flip it around so I work better left-handed, or this direction, on its own. Okay, but I want it to go, that's kind of the, see how I was going into the wrong side? I want to go on the side that this normally naturally comes out of the knot. So I'm gonna go back actually over here. And you can go this way too, I suppose, but you need the opening of your fid to be able to take the standing in. And you wanna take it down. So once I put the fid in, I want it to go down to about here. So I can do a little mark there before it comes out. If I try to do it too close to here and the fid comes out, then that might not be enough material to actually bury. And this, this piece will move up as it gets thicker, as that opens to uh, accept the buried piece. So right about here, put it up. like when scissors cut on wrapping paper. Once it finds it, you can see it just finds itself, its center, and it just slides right in there. So there's my mark. I'm gonna go down at least that far without 
getting on the wrong side of any of those strands that are in there. So open it up more, open it up more. But I also need to make sure that doesn't go all the way in. So there's my mark here. So I can come out anywhere below that without splitting any. Smoosh that all together. Piece I want to bury, the only piece I have tapered. So I'm going to keep it straight. Put these ends in there as best you can to help protect them and keep them from fraying and being bent back the opposite direction. Now as I pull this knitting needle through, I don't want to inadvertently pull it off the end of the um, tag end that I'm burying, working in that I'm burying. So I just take this other fit, just kind of jam it in there and help it push all the way through to where I can take that all out and that out. Just pull it till you make sure you got all those cut pieces that you used to taper through the piece that you're burying it into. And now you can do what's called milking the outer side, the outer sheath down and look how pretty that is. Doesn't really matter that you know you went down here about an inch, not a big deal. Nice and smooth and buried. I'm gonna do that to the second one and then I'll have a finished soft shackle that I will go out and tighten on my winch in my truck against a tree. All right, so we're outside getting ready to uh, show you how to tighten the knots and I've brought all the soft shackles that I've made recently to include uh, the one I bought from Harbor Freight, uh, this one here that is actually 7 16 uh, diameter Dyneema. Everything else here, all these blue ones, are the 3 8 inch uh, Dyneema that I bought. I have some that, are, that I have tied a long time ago. I even have the original, the OG one that I tied and we used to haul Honcho out of the race course this past uh, November. I have some that are totally buried tag ends with the one inch tubular webbing. On it is an abrasion guard. I have a couple of those. I have this one that's a little bit smaller than the rest, but we're gonna use it anyway. I have this one that the tails aren't buried yet, and we're just doing that to experiment to see which, if it matters, if the tails are buried already, or if they're not buried, if it matters um, when we tighten the knot. And then I even have this one where I tightened, or I buried one of the tag ends, and I didn't bury the other one. I'm going to daisy chain these because there's, you know, the force will be the same across all of them. I'm going to hook them all together, uh, pull a little bit and probably four low, put some tension on it, and then maybe do a couple of bounces on it to really tighten it. I'm going to tighten them like this in one direction, take the loop off the button knot, flip it around the other way, like so, kind of do this one handed, and put it over and then tighten the knot the other way. All right, so here's my setup. I got the Badlands, uh, I'm not sure how long that is, but that's a snatch strap that has some stretch to it around a massive tree. I have all of my soft shackles to include the little baby one I made, all linked up and daisy chain. The important thing is to make sure that you've once you've opened the loop and put the button knot through, that it's cinched down and these two pieces are even so that knot is uh, cinched down in that loop as best it can be. Doesn't really matter how they are oriented, if the knots here in the middle are up against something, but I got them all laid out here. I even got the uh, original one in here with a really tight knot that's already been tightened by use. And then to cap it all off, I got the Harbor Freight 7 16th inch, 7 16th inch diameter uh, material hooked up to a toe strap that I just have on the two tow hooks on the bumper of my Jeep, just in order to uh, put even pressure on the Jeep. All right, so let's see how it goes.
you see how much smaller that knot is and how it's got kind of that tension in there from being used. Again, it's just uh, it's really strong stuff. It's abrasion resistant itself, but that knot is definitely tighter. And it's got that, so now I'm just gonna go the other way and pull from the other side. I want to point out even this soft shackle where the loop is like a little too big if I uh, had caught this earlier I would have redone this one but even with a big loop as long as it's closed down like that it's not going to pull out the problem is as you when you put it over and if you work it work around and move things around it could easily come off before you tension but once it's tensioned and this thing's being pulled that knot is not going to pull through there So there you have it. The soft shackles have been tightened one way, flipped around and tightened the other way. I'm going to take it apart and we're going to go in and kind of inspect uh, and show you how some of them have turned out. All right, so here's the result of the tightening. Some of these did really good, like this one turns out good. The knot's nice and tight, still symmetrical. Little loose strand there, but not a big deal. One thing that did surprise me that I found, the ones where the berry started down a half inch as the knot tightened this way, the berry, this length got exposed and some of these are kind of wanting to come out like that, which isn't a big deal. Uh, I can pull them out and rebury it after tightening, uh, which again, the how not to slack line people, they tested that. Some of them that were buried into the nylon sheaths of the climbing webbing, nice symmetrical, hard knot, ready to go. Um, again, there's a good one. The one with the tag ends not buried yet. Again, did a good job. There's a little bit of uh, looseness in this one strand, but again, that'll work its way around. Um, again, you can bury before or after. Maybe what caused this was the shortness of my bury. Like I only, you know, after you take that out, it only buried that far. Maybe if I buried a little bit further, but again, you're using more material. Not a big deal, I'm gonna rebury it now that it's tight. Uh, I do think, kind of like what the how not to slack line, guys found out that if you bury before you tighten, it seems to be a more symmetrical tightening of the knot than if you do the ones, like here's the one that had one buried, one knot buried. There's a little bit of looseness in that one. Neither one buried here. Again, this one, maybe a little, like you can see I can move this piece but again, still really good, really tight. And even the Harbor Freight one, as I said when I was talking about this one, you know, when I bought it, it wasn't this soft, but as you use it, and you can even see the whiteness and how the red is kind of coming off, this material does not take dye. And even here, if you split one of the strands open, you can see that the, it's, it's white on the inside. But, uh, you know, they put a lot of this coating on to give it some UV protection and abrasion resistance. They cover it with this. All right, so the big thing is why would you use a soft shackle? Soft shackles are about as strong as a three-quarter inch steel shackle. But as you can see, this is really light. The specific density of these things, of this material, is so light that it actually floats on water. The stretch is much less than a steel cable, so it doesn't store energy in the uh, material. So if it does break or fail, it's not going to have as much uh, energy. If you're using it on a snatch strap that is designed to stretch, that snatch strap will store a lot of energy. And if that breaks, if you had a steel shackle on one end, that thing's going to go flying through the air like a bullet. This uh, will not. This might hurt if it hits you, but it's not going to kill you. It's not going to break stuff. Um, but again, you're risking your life or rig on something that you make yourself. That's up to you to decide. Uh, you want to tie one of these knots just to see if you can for the fun of it. But recommend buying commercially made soft shackles that are made by uh, big companies that have lots of lawyers and liability. 
But if you want to do your own, just like anything you do on your rig, if you do it yourself, it's uh, up to you to decide what kind of risk you want to take. But it turned out good. I'm going to make a few more. Uh, the NTD Racing Team members wanted two each, about 10 of, uh, so I need about 10 of these. And we're going to keep using them on, on Honcho. Stay tuned for more. Here's how to tie the cinch knot that I use to uh, hold the pieces of Dyneema together and also to hold the uh, sheath down while I splice it. I'll use this uh, kind of contrasting yellow so you can see what I'm doing underneath. I start with a piece of 550 cord. This one's kind of long. That's all right, go over. So standing in back here with the working end, come around, cross, around underneath again. Tuck it underneath. If you recognize that is a clove hitch. So basically you start with a clove hitch and then see where these two pieces that are parallel, you take this working end and you just do an overhand knot right there. So you have a overhand knot that you see here with this piece going over it. And then when you pull it tight, it will hold. And that will hold with some 550 cord since Dyneema is so slick, it needs to be kind of rough so it'll stick and hold against itself. And anything that's pushing back like when it's compressed will help hold that knot really tight. It can be very hard to untie, depending on how tight you get it. That's why you never use it on like a tourniquet or anything like that. You can just work that out. Okay, so to do it again, from this side, go cross over, bring it around underneath and under itself to where those two pieces are parallel. With this going over top, there's a clove hitch like that underneath like so pull it tight the cinch knot okay so if you couldn't tell bear was an eagle scout that dude is so smart anyways um all right here's that story i promised i would tell we were blasting through the desert like animals at about mile 45 and we come across chase our trophy truck number 25 l i think it was Anyways, they were broken down on the side of the road and it was a complete electrical shutdown of their truck. For some reason, they couldn't charge and their batteries were dead and everything. So they stopped us and they asked for some help and we radioed back to their team, hey, your, this is where your truck's at, this is their problem. And so we continued on our race. And then about mile, mile 120, we buried the honcho big time into the silt. And we're stuck there, we're gonna spend the night, cars are passing us, you know, no one's helping us out there. Uh, and then we get this message from nowhere, hey, Trophy Truck 25L is, is back on the course, and they're the last car that's gonna pass you all night long. So Jimbo has the soft shackles with our recovery rope hooked on a honcho, and he's got one more soft shackle and the recovery rope, and he's waving it as 25L goes by. Those guys stop, we hook it up really quickly, and this massive trophy truck, from what I understand, just completely rips honcho out of its silt hole of doom and, uh, and saves us out there. And we were able to continue at least for a little while before we ran into some radiator issues. But anyway, thank you to those guys. And thank you to Bear for just making these amazing soft shackles. I didn't know about them before, but they are a total game changer as far as how we connect our recovery ropes up to honcho anywhere we want to. So those are really cool. Hopefully you found this video useful and you can build your own soft shackles or something like that. There's a lot of other videos we have on our YouTube channel, NTD Racing, and hopefully you'll consider watching those, maybe liking, subscribing, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes, or leaving a comment. All those things help us out here at NTD Racing, and we sure do appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care of yourself.